Choose righteousness. Glory. 2 Corinthians chapter 5. 2 Corinthians chapter 5. You know, as we are worshiping the Lord, I saw uh, three places. And we know that there's three chambers in the tabernacle, the outer court, the holy place, and the most holy place. Amen? And as we were worshiping the Lord, there was a second chamber or place which he called nothingness. And I saw as we were worshiping, we come out of self into nothingness. From nothingness, we enter into his presence. Does everybody understand? Because what's happening is everything that we're carrying, amen, everything that we're holding on to, hallelujah, needs to be cut loose before we can enter his presence. So we must enter a place of nothingness before we can have fellowship. Does everybody understand? Because he does not have fellowship with carnality. God does not fellowship with darkness, evil. Amen? He fellowships with light. So what happens is we're shedding all of our darkness, character, old man, as we're praising and worshiping the Lord and stepping into a place where there's nothing. Nothing. That allows me and you to enter into his presence. Now we're something. We're someone because we're him. And he is us. Does everybody understand there's a union in here? And that's when there's an exchange made also. Everything that you thought you wanted, everything that you thought you desired is now diminished. Everything is nothing. Now you're in this place where it's whatever you want, whatever you desire whatever you will. So it's a place that we must enter multiple times a week. Because without entering that place multiple times a week, we fall into a place called survival and reject surrender because surrender to an individual is fearful. So we still fight in that area of survival what we used to believe, what we feel, what we think, traditions, all of these things. We're still fighting to release, relieve ourselves of guilt and condemnation, failures. We're still fighting. See, in this place, there's no more fight. It's done. There's nothing. <laughs> nothing. Once you've hit nothing, you have now access to everything. Oh, what a glorious thing it is. I'm telling you, it's phenomenal. There's so much joy and peace. There's so much of everything of him. There's the greatest riches of everything. So when somebody asks you what you're doing, you say nothing. What are you fighting? The place of nothing. <laughs> Why? So you can access everything. Everything. And 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. Let's speak it together. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, what's Christ mean? The anointing, the eternal presence, power, and truth of God Almighty. We can never forget this. Amen. Um, I want to say something 
but I don't want to make it like it's not doctrinal, you know. But it is doctrine. But, you know, the Word says something right before this. This says, no longer we acknowledge Christ in the flesh. Amen? The verse just before this. We no longer acknowledge Christ in the flesh. Why? Because he who's in Christ, it's not about a person. Okay? So we've got to, don't take this wrong, we've got to remove Jesus out of the way. It's more than Jesus now. It's bigger than Jesus. Jesus was contained. Amen? He was God who became flesh. So there was containment there. This is no longer containment. This is unlimited. No limitations in this. So he who's in Christ, he who's in the presence, the eternal presence, the eternal power, and the eternal truth of God Almighty, endless, is a new creation. Endless. See, where there's limitations, there's not freedom. Endless. He is a new creation in the anointing, the eternal power, presence, and truth of God Almighty. This is not physical. This is spiritual. This is new birth. You know, we defied all the laws. To be born again is to defile every law of creation. Because only God can defile his own law. When you think about this, this is an area to where to be born again in the anointing is off planet. <laughs> Even though we're on planet. Does everybody get this? This defiles all the laws to be born again. It what? Defies all the laws. Thank you. Of creation, where you and I are now created again. The world doesn't understand that. When they hear somebody is born again, they're irritated already. I know BC, when somebody told me they were born again, it'd irritate me. Because carnal mind can't comprehend born again. <laughs> it doesn't understand born again. It will never understand born again. In other words, you have, and I have been granted a brand new life. Not designated for this planet, but designated off planet. So that way we no longer live for just the things on this planet. We live for something further, eternal, unlimitless. He who is in Christ in the anointing is a new creation, a new birth in a new realm as a new race in the process of conversion. It's a conversion process. In this process of conversion, there's a regeneration, and then there's a development in the character of Christ by the anointing as children of God. Offsprings and joint heirs. We have been released from the temporary corruption of wickedness, lawlessness, pollution, and deception. And we are, and that's contained in this world and controlled by this world. We are released from these things as a new creation. All of these things are available for me and you. If we're in position. Is everybody okay? So there is a process, a conversion process. What we, it's the process of conversion, regeneration, and development of the character of God Almighty and His children. In the character of God Almighty. 
Remember, Jesus was contained with the anointing. That's why he's called the Christ. He had to die, had to sacrifice himself so that anointing could be released from him to go to every individual. To be born of the eternal realm and released from the temporary realm. So that death for me and you here is a new beginning, not an end. But for those who are not born again, it is the end. That's why the world cannot understand what born again is, the carnal mind. So the enemy is always trying to come against us and cause us to drift, to live for ourselves and no longer live for God anymore. In Ephesians chapter 5. Ephesians 5, we're going to read the first uh, 21st verses. I'm going to speak these out. Because these are basically an overall summary to the process, conversion, regeneration, and development. And, of course, maintenance or ma maintaining, imitating God's character. Not as a pretender, but an imitator. Does everybody understand that? Not a pretender. In this, there's an inherited character of the desire of God in the new birth. Ephesians 1, Ephesians 5, verse 1. Let's speak it. Therefore, be imitators of God as dear children, and walk in love as Christ also has loved us and given himself for us, an offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet-smelling aroma. But fornication and all uncleanness or covetousness, let it not even be named among you as it is fitting for saints. Neither filthiness nor foolish talking nor coarse jesting, which are not fitting, but rather giving of thanks. For this you know that no fornicator, unclean person, nor covetous man who is an idolater has any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and God. Let no one deceive you with empty words, for because of these things, the wrath of God comes upon the sons of disobedience. Therefore, do not be partakers with them, for you were once darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Walk as children of light, for the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness, righteousness, and truth, finding out what is acceptable to the Lord. And have no fellowship with unfruitful works of darkness, but rather what? Expose them. For it is shameful even to speak of those things which are done by them in secret. But all things that are exposed are made manifest by the light. For whatever makes manifest is light. Therefore, he says, awake you who sleep, arise from the dead, and Christ will give you light. See then that you walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time, because the days are evil. Therefore, do not be unwise, but understand what the will of the Lord is. And do not be drunk with wine, which is in dissipation, but be filled with the Holy Spirit, speaking to one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord, giving thanks always for all things to God the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, submitting to one another in the fear of the Lord. Again, this is an overall summary of what it is to maintain and direction of the character of God as imitators of God in us. And John chapter 5. John chapter 5. Hallelujah. In verse 24. Is everybody there? 
most assuredly I say to you, he who hears my word and believes in him who sent me has everlasting life and shall not come into judgment, but has passed from death into life. Most assuredly I say to you, the hour is coming and now is when the dead will hear the voice of the Son of God and those who hear will live. For as the Father has life in himself, so he has granted the Son to have life in himself, and has given him authority to execute judgment also, because he is the Son of Man. Do not marvel at this, for the hour is coming in which all who are in the graves will hear his voice and come forth, those who have done good to resurrection of life, and those who have done evil to the resurrection of condemnation. I can of myself do nothing, as I hear I judge, and my judgment is righteous, because I do not seek my own will, but the will of the Father who sent me. In this new creation, we are passing through death into life. By doing the will of God, we do this by maintaining the character of God. You cannot do the will of God by without maintaining the character of God. And this is all done in the anointing of God. In 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. Hallelujah. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. Starting at verse 1. First Thessalonians 4, verse 1. Hallelujah. Is everybody there? Let's speak it. Finally then, brethren, we urge and exhort in the Lord Jesus that you should abound more and more, just as you receive from us how you ought to walk and to please God. In other words, how you are to imitate God. For you know what commandments we gave you through the Lord Jesus. For this is the will of God, your sanctification, that you should abstain from sexual immorality, that each of you should know how to possess his own vessel in sanctification and honor, not in passion of lust like the Gentiles who do not know God, that no one should take advantage of and defraud his brother in this matter, because the Lord is the avenger of all such, as we also forewarned you and testified. For God did not call us to uncleanness, but in holiness. Therefore, he who rejects us does not reject man, but God, who has also given us the Holy Spirit. But concerning brotherly love, you have no need that I should write to you. For you yourselves are taught by God to love one another. And indeed, you do so toward all the brethren who are in all Macedonia. But we urge you, brethren, that you increase more and more, that you also aspire to lead a quiet life, to mind your own business, and to work with your own hands as we commanded you, that you may walk properly toward those who are outside and that you may lack nothing. In other words, to perform the work of God, we must develop the character of God. Amen? The first priority he talks about here is sanctification, separation. Sanctification. Everyone say sanctification. It is the separation from the old, from the world, and from the corrupt. From the old, from the world, and from the corrupt. from the old, from the world, and from the corrupt. This is a purification. In this purification process, this leads to regeneration and development of the character of God. Again, this leads to regeneration and development of the character of God, of the character of God. One of the main ingredients in this process 
of sanctification, purification. And the characters have developed the character of God as something we call pure intentions. Pure intentions. Pure intentions is one of the main ingredients. Without pure intentions, there is no process of character. It will always nullify, disqualify. That's why we must maintain pure intentions in everything that we do. There will be no character of Christ. It cannot fully mature. When there's something pure, it means that it's not mixed with anything. It's uncontaminated, undiluted. It's flawless. It's genuine, something that's pure. It's authentic. It's real. It's true. It's clean. It's fresh, something that is pure. I'll say it again. It's not mixed with anything. It's uncontaminated, undiluted, flawless, genuine, authentic, real, true, clean, and fresh. It's genuine. Pure. And inten intentions is, are things that an individual aims, plan, it's goals. Amen. It's a target, it's a purpose. So, pure intentions is first to be how can you maintain a pure intention? <laughs> first, to be honest with yourself and what you want. You must be honest with yourself and what you want. Why do I want this? Because an intention always has a want, a motive behind it. A pure intention does what you do what you say. You will say and do according to the will of God You will say and do according to the time of God. You will say and do according to the word of God. We look for the character of God by pure intentions. Does everybody understand? That is the, one of the main ingredients. What's the intent? Is it pure? What follows that intention is a motive and a desire. So we're always looking at that, whether it's uncontaminated. Is it genuine? What does the Word tell us? That God tests us to see if our faith is genuine, if it's pure. See, we're to be separated from the world, sanctified, for purification. It is a process that you and I go through of regeneration and development of God's character as joint heirs and offsprings of God Almighty. That was his intent for me and you, that we would be like him. Not like the world. That we would be like him that would see the way he sees, that we would love the way he loves, that we would respond the way he responds, that we would forgive the way he would forgive, that we would have mercy the way he has mercy, and that we would judge the way he judges. Is everybody okay? Psalm 119. is pure intentions. <laughs> Hallelujah. Now, this may sound strange, but you may have good works with unpure intentions. That's why the Word tells us that there are those who come in His name. Amen. They have a form of godliness. 
So there are those that you know, you can tell what their intents are by what they speak, by what they do, by their agendas, by what their wants are, by their associations. Whether they fulfill what they say they're going to fulfill, do what they say they're going to do. In Psalm 119 and verse 1, Let's speak it. Blessed are the what? Undefiled in the way who walk in the law of the Lord. Blessed are those who keep his testimony. These are blessed. What's the opposite of blessed? Cursed. So anything that does not carry, carry, carry the imitate or the character of God is cursed. Think about this. The world is cursed. You and I were born with a curse into the world. That's why we were born with the curse of death. But we are now going through that curse of death into life. We no longer die. We live forever. As long as we maintain the character of God Almighty. Because only He lives forever. And those who imitate Him will live forever also. Verse 2, blessed are those who keep his testimonies, who seek him with a whole heart. They also do no iniquity. They walk in his ways. You have commanded us to keep your precepts diligently. Oh, that my ways were directed to keep your statutes. Then I would not be ashamed when I look into all of your commandments. I will praise you with the uprightness of heart. When I learn your righteous judgments, I will keep your statutes Oh, do not forsake me utterly. How can a young man cleanse his way? By taking heed according to your word. With my whole heart I have sought you. Oh, let me not wander, wander from your commandments. Your word I have hidden in my heart that I might not sin against you. Blessed are you, O Lord. Teach me your statutes. With my lips I have declared all the judgments of your mouth. I rejoice in the way of your testimonies as much as in all riches. I will meditate on your precepts and contemplate your ways. I will delight myself in your statutes, and I will not forget your word. Blessed are the undefiled. What a statement he makes here. Phenomenal. That statement of wanting to imitate the character of God Almighty. To be sanctified, set apart. Blessed are the undefiled, which means pure. The word undefiled is associated with blessed are the pure. Christ-like intentions produces not only the character of Christ, but integrity, responsibility, and humility. Again, integrity, responsibility, and humility. In 1 John chapter 3. Oh, happy days. Is everybody okay? Pure intentions. So one of the things we want to always do is give a self-examination. Is my intent pure? Is my want pure? In verse 1, 1 John chapter 3, verse 1, let's speak it together. Behold what manner of love the Father has bestowed on us, that we should be called children of God. Therefore the world does not know us because it did not know him. Beloved, now we are children of God, and it has yet, not yet been revealed what we shall be. But we know that when he is revealed, we shall be like him. For we shall see him as he is. We can't even comprehend that. You know, the only thing what we've been really given is images, pictures, you know, things, drawings. But it says that's not what he's really like. His pure light. I can tell you that when he showed up, there was no former figure. His radiant 
ripping light through every part of my being, every member, every cell of my body was ripped, penetrated through with light, with pure love. Pure. When thou was separated from that, for a period, short period of time, everything felt filthy, contaminated. Everything. My breath was no longer breathing of the world. I wanted to breathe of the Spirit. Because even the breath of the world seemed contaminated to me because I realized it was the prince of the power of air. It took about two months to come out of some of that, which I didn't want to. But then I wasn't really too functionable here. But hallelujah. Do I desire that? Yes. I can't wait to go home. But in the meantime, I have a job to do. And so do each and every one of us. See, but if you're still living for here and not for there, something ain't right. Something's not right. We weren't created to live here. You want to live here, you can stay here. And when the place cooks, you'll cook too. Because it will. Oh, hallelujah. Verse 3. And everyone who has this hope in him has the hope in him of being like him purifies himself just as he is pure. Why? Because you're imitating his character. Whoever commits sin also commits lawlessness, and sin is lawlessness. And you know that he was manifested to take away our sins, and in him there is no sin. Whoever abides in him does not sin. Now, when he speaks of him, is he speaking of a person? No. He's speaking of the eternal presence, power, and truth of God Almighty, the anointing. We've got to stop looking at the area of living in a person. We're living in the limitless presence, power, and truth of God Almighty. Not a person anymore. Oh, come on, grab hold of that. That means that you are placed in an unlimited condition. That means nothing is impossible. Every law can be broke. Broken. Jeez, I heard it from here. Uh, you didn't have to say it. <laughs> Hallelujah. I heard it from two voices in this room. Anyways, even though they didn't speak. Glory. Verse 7. Little children, let no one deceive you. He who practices righteousness is righteous, just as he is righteous. He who sins is of the devil, for the devil has sinned from the beginning. For this purpose the Son of God was manifested, that he might destroy the works of the devil. Whoever has been born of God does not sin. For his seed remains in him, and he cannot sin because he has been born of God. In this, the children of God and the children of the devil are manifest. Whoever does not practice righteousness is not of God, nor is he who does not love his brother. So practicing righteousness is a fruit of the character of imitating God. Amen? Why? Because behind it all is a pure intention. Everything is pure. It's not mixed. There's not a manipulation for the intent. It's pure. There's not a selfish desire in it. It's a godly desire. It's different. Hope of being like him in the character of God Almighty with the desires and intent which leading us to a pure, sanctified, undefiled life <laughs> We're to be loving the anointing. 
and hating evil. We should hate deception, lies, and half-truths. In Hebrews chapter 10, Hebrews 10, Hallelujah. Hebrews 10, verse 19. Let's speak it. Therefore, brethren, having boldness to enter the holiest by the blood of Jesus, by a new and living way which he consecrated for us. In other words, he purified a place for me and you. Through the veil that is his flesh, and having the high priest over the house of God, let us draw near with a true heart and full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. Let us hold fast the confession of our hope without wavering, for he who has promised is faithful. And let us consider one another in order to stir up love and good words, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as it is a manner of some, but exhorting one another and so much the more as you see the day approaching. It is a meeting place that was consecrated or purified for me and you. Accessing this place is vital for me and you. But by for, so that you and I can forsake evil. Amen? We want to forsake it. We want to forsake selfish intentions. And we want to gather together to stir up love and the anointing to manifest pure intentions with good works to follow. Again, there may be good works without a pure intention. We want pure intentions that have good works. Pure intentions are backed by a pure heart. So we put Christ in front of us always. We align ourselves with kingdom business. Living a life that is scheduled around assembling of God. Not around assembling of selfish desires. Not around assembling of the desires of the world. I do not, I don't set, set my schedule around anything except for first God's presence. Assembling. Why? Because that's how we maintain pure intentions. It's important. What did he say? He says, to stir up. To stir up. Many forsake the schedule assembling and gathering together of worship and fellowship. Why? Because it brings training and testing, doesn't it? You and I are going to need endurance to complete, to associate, to follow, to attach to. In the process of regeneration, conversion, and development of God's character in each and every one of us. In 1 Timothy 4, he warns us. Let's go there for a second. There is a warning of contamination to corrupt the pure. In 1 Timothy chapter 4. It says those who are pure, pure. It talks about seeing God. Those who are pure, pure heart, clean hands to enter his presence, pure. So you and I will all be tested all the time. We are challenged to check our genuineness of where we truly are in character of Christ or still in character of old man or the ways of the world. In 1 Timothy chapter 4 and verse 1, is everybody there? Good. Let's speak it together. Hallelujah. 
First Timothy chapter, what I say? Four, verse one. Okay. Glory. Now the Spirit expressly says that in the latter times some will depart from the faith, giving heed to deceiving spirits and doctrines of demons. In other words, they're going to be misled by what they hear. They're going to be misled by what they feel. They're going to be misled by what they see because they're going to agree with something that's corruptible and it's going to contaminate them. And it's going to remove them from a pure position to a contaminated position. Speaking lies and hypocrisy, having their own conscience seared with a hot iron, forbidding to marry and con commanding to abstain from foods which God created to be received with thanksgiving by those who believe and know the truth. For every creature of God is good. Nothing is to be refused if it is received with thanksgiving, for it is sanctified by the word of God in prayer. If you instruct the brethren in these things, you will be a good minister of Jesus Christ, nourished in the words of faith and of good doctrine which you have carefully followed. But reject profane and old wise tales. Exercise yourself toward godliness. For bodily exercise profits a little, but godliness is profitable for all things, having promise of life that now is and of that which is to come. This is a faithful saying and worthy of all acceptance. For to this end we both labor and suffer reproach because we trust in the living God who is the Savior of all men, especially of those who believe. These things command and teach. Let no one despise your youth, but be an example to the believers in word, in conduct, in love, in spirit, in faith, and in purity. Till I come, give attention to the reading, of, to exhortation, to doctrine. Do not neglect the gift that is in you, which was given to you by prophecy, with the laying on the hands of the eldership. Meditate on these things. Give yourselves, give yourselves entirely to them, that your progress may be evident to all. Take heed to yourself and to the doctrine. Continue in them, for in doing this, you will save both yourself and those who hear you. In Revelation 3. Pure intentions. Is everybody there? Uh, in verse 14. Revelation 3, 14. And to the angel of the church of the Laodiceans write, these things says the amen, the faithful, the true witness, the beginning of the creation of God. I know your works, that you are neither cold nor hot. I could wish you were cold or hot. So then because you are lukewarm, warm and neither cold nor hot i will vomit you out of my mouth because you say i am rich have become wealthy and have need of nothing and do not know that you are wretched miserable poor blind and naked i counsel you to buy from me gold refined in fire that you may be rich in white garments that you may be clothed and that the shame of your nakedness may not be revealed and anoint your eyes with eyes salve that you may see. As many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. Therefore, be zealous and repent. Behold, I am, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come into him and dine with him and he with me. To him who overcomes, I will grant to sit with me on my throne, as I also overcame and sat down with my father in his throne. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. Now, he says he counsels us to buy from him gold refined in fire. That means pure. It's symbolic to be pure. We're to everything, if you think about it, think about when he, when he put everything together, the tabernacle. What did he do? He said, I want pure gold on the altar. Everything was associated with pure gold. Anything with the tabernacle was to be considered pure, uncontaminated, not mixed with anything. 
genuine, real, everything. So in this, many who lack assembling brings lukewarmness. Individuals that lack assembling will be lukewarm. It's guaranteed. The process of conversion, regeneration, and development of the character of God is by refining, which brings purifying. Amen? It is to remove all impurities from me and you. So anything that's impure according to the eyes of God. Now, it may not be impure to the eyes of man. But it may be impure to the eyes of God. He will bring us through fire. He will challenge us. He will bring us through a refining till we are purified in every area. And Isaiah 48. See, believe it or not, right now the world is going through a refining process. It's going through a regeneration process. It's going through a, a redeveloping process. The whole world. Everything. Isaiah 48. Do you live in the world? It's not a trick question. Everyone say, yes, I live in the world. Okay, make it simple. <laughs> but we're not of the world, right? So if we're living in the anointing, we're in the world, but we're not of the world. Amen. So because we're in this world, we haven't left the planet yet. Even though we have in one area, we're blessed every spiritual blessing and seated in heavenly places. Amen. Our, spirit, our spiritual life, our eternal life has already begun. Amen. So it's, we're, 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 we're done as long as we maintain. As long as we maintain, we're in. But the moment we don't maintain, we begin to drift and lose. We lose position. We lose seat. We lose authority. We lose credibility. We lose character. And we lose pure intentions. Amen? Isaiah 48. So if we're in this world... That means we will go through the process just like everybody else. Oh, happy days. And verse 9. For my name's sake, I will defer my anger, and for my praise, I will restrain it from you, so that I do not cut you off. Behold, I have refined you, but not as silver. I have tested you in the what? Furnace of affliction. <laughs> for my own sake, for my own sake, I will do this. For how should my name be profaned? And I will not give my glory to another. <laughs> Listen to me, O Jacob and Israel, my called. I am he, I am the first, and I am also the last. Indeed, my hand has laid the foundation of the earth, and my right hand has stretched out the heavens. When I call to them, they stand up together. All of you assemble yourselves and hear who among them has declared these things. The Lord loves him. He shall do his pleasure on Babylon, and his arm shall be against the Chaldeans. I, even I, have spoken. Yes, I have called him. I have brought him, and his way will what? Prosper. Come near to me, hear this. I have not spoken in secret from the beginning, from the time that it was. I was there, and now the Lord God and his Spirit has sent me. So we see the furnace of affliction, trials, challenges to create pure intentions, removal of selfish and defiled, defilement to express and respond to the character of Christ Jesus. The anointing. Remember, that is who he is. He's the eternal presence, power, and truth. He's not just a person. He is everything. Amen? And 2 Corinthians 4. So 
So the furnace of affliction is going to remove selfish ambitions. Corrupt intentions. You realize that your intention is not pure. Thank God for the blood. That's why before you complete or do, we have to see it through. One of the things we want to see through is through the self-examination. Is my intent pure? Is my motive pure? Is it selfish? Is it harmful? And is it pleasing or displeasing to God? Verse 16. Let's speak it. 2 Corinthians 4, 16. Therefore we do not lose heart. Turn to your neighbor and say, don't lose heart. But endure. Therefore we do not lose heart, even though our outward man is perishing, yet the inward man is being renewed day by day. For our light affliction, everyone say light affliction. <laughs> which is but for a moment, is working for us. Everyone to say, it's working for me. To your neighbor and say, it's working for you too. <laughs> this light affliction, which is but for a moment, is working for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. While we don't look at the things which, we, which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporary, but the things which are not seen are eternal. Light afflictions. Believe me, somebody's always going through something worse than you. Amen. And we're going to close at 2 Timothy 2. Pure intentions. Hallelujah. Second Timothy 2, starting at verse 1. You therefore, my son and daughter, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. And the things that you have heard from me among many witnesses, commit these to faithful men. Does a faithful person have good intentions, pure intentions? Amen. Who will be able to teach others also. No one engaged in warfare entangles himself with the affairs of this life that he may please him who listed him as, an, as a soldier. Now, are the days evil? Are we in a war? Were we born in a war? Every day's got battles then. Okay. And also, if anyone competes in athletics, he's not crowned unless he competes according to the rules. The hardworking farmer must be first to partake of the crops. Consider what I say, and may the Lord give you understanding in all things. Remember that Jesus Christ, the seed of David, was raised from the dead according to my gospel, for which I suffered trouble as an evildoer, even to the point of chains. But the word of God is not chained. Therefore I endure, everyone say endure, all things for the sake of the elect, that they may also obtain the salvation which is in Christ Jesus with eternal glory. This is a faithful saying. If we died with him, we shall also live with him. If we endure, we shall also reign with him. If we deny him, he's going to deny us. If we are faithless, he remains faithful. He cannot deny himself. Remind them of these things, charging them before the Lord not to strive without word, about words to no profit, to the ruin of the hearers. Be diligent to present yourselves approved to God, a worker who does not need to be ashamed rightly dividing the word of truth. But shun profane and idle babblings, for they increase in got more ungodliness. And their message will spread like cancer. Hebneus and Philodus are of this sort, who have strayed concerning the truth, saying that the resurrection is already past, and they overthrow the faith of some. Nevertheless, the solid foundation of God stands, having this seal. The Lord knows those who are his, and let everyone who names the name of Christ depart from iniquity. But in a great house there are not only vessels of gold and silver, but also of wood and clay, some for honor and some for dishonor. Therefore, if anyone does what? 
cleanses, that means purifies himself from the latter. He will be a vessel of honor, sanctified and useful for the master prepared for every good work. Flee also youthful lust, but pursue righteousness, faith, love, peace with those who call on the Lord out of a what? Pure heart. So you want to associate with those who have a pure heart. But avoid foolish and ignorant disputes, knowing that they generate strife. And a servant of the Lord must not quarrel, but be gentle to all, able to teach, patient, in humility, correcting those who are in opposition, if God perhaps will grant them repentance, so that they may know the truth, and that they may come to their senses and escape the snare of the devil, having been taken captive by him to do his will. So if you do the will of the devil, can you enter heaven? No. Only if you do the will of the Lord. Bottom line. So we want to get to a place where we are imitating God and his character. And that can only happen by living in the anointing. Amen? Not forsaken assembly, scheduling everything around God's presence and His will. Whatever it is, we schedule around Him, nothing else. If we begin to do that, it doesn't mean you can't take a vacation, hello? So you schedule your vacation around God's will. It doesn't mean you can't go out and have fun. You schedule it around His will. Everything is scheduled around Him. Why? So if you maintain a pure intentions and a pure heart, everything you do will be scheduled around him. It's that simple. But if you're not willing to deny yourself, assemble. If you're not willing to deny yourself and pick up his character, if you're not willing to feed your spirit, man, so allowing the conversion of your soul, then you will never imitate his image and character. And many people are successful in the wrong assignment. And they'll be disappointed when they get before the Lord, thinking that they were doing the will of God when they weren't. Amen. Father, we thank you for your word. We are honored and blessed. We ask that you protect us and bring revelation and continue to bring us a self-examination quickening us that we may see things through to make sure that our intentions and our motives are pure for your, for your glory, for your honor, and for your praise in Jesus' name. And everybody said amen.